Welcome, everybody, to the Get Bit Podcast, the podcast for blurs, for nerds. If you have a fandom, you are most certainly welcome here. Uh, of course, the host with the most, uh, of course, myself, Black Spartan, the man to my left, your right, show a guy, Joe. Um, too hot, can't comedy. Yeah, it definitely is hot. But how are you feeling, sir? Too hot, can't comedy. <laughs> Like my uh, light is weird because my overhead my overhead lights off because if I start to glow anymore, it's still me sweating. <laughs> With that being said, guys, uh, we are a little bit older. Sometimes language does fly, uh, but at the same time, we do try to watch it. And also, trailers. Uh, sometimes trailers we play on here um, may have a little too much of uh, something for younger viewers. So viewer discretion is advised. Although, let's be honest, it's pretty fun. So. Um, we do have some trailers and some news for the week. Um, to start with, we might as well start with uh the marketing master genius Ryan Reynolds because only he can make the Bachelorette and Wolverine somehow relatable in a commercial. If you haven't seen it, well, here it is. I can't do this. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, you can. What the hell am I even doing? You're explaining to Bachelor Nation why our movie is the perfect date movie while holding this. Oh, I love the smell of sunflowers. I'm not doing either of those. Yes, you are, because you are a confident, powerful person. And 18 to 49-year-old women are super important demo for us. No cap. What? No cap. What does that mean? It's what all of my fellow Gen Zers say. Slay FR trauma, Genergy, four-hour work week, quiet quitting. Look, the point Jeez, is... I'm out of here. All right. Stay off camera. I'll handle this. <sighs> hey nation, Deadpool here again to tell you that our movie has everything you love. We really zoom into complex relationship dynamics. Uh, there's ample amounts of cheeky humor. And in the end, well, I I'm not gonna lie, it was quite a payday for us. You promised me the Bachelorette was coming. I made a lot of promises, buddy. And I'll tell you, you are delivering. Come again. Again. How is it that, I mean, for reasons beyond my comprehension, Deadpool and Wolverine is definitely going to be the movie that everybody wants to see. Of course, we do know that's coming out very soon, a couple of weeks from now, July 26th. Um, commercials and marketing aside, it's going to be everywhere. So, I mean, there's really nothing more I can say of that except that I'm looking forward to the next commercial that's going to have those two in it. But, uh, but Joe, I'm, I mean, what what more can we say to this? The fact that you know, if you have a commercial, why not have Deadpool, Deadpool or Wolverine, or just Deadpool behind it? Uh, you muted, Joe. I'm guessing no cap means uh, no butt, or yeah. no cap America butt. So we'll go with that. We're working with that. Yeah, no cap, no lie. I always love it. I love when you just you see a Canadian use American slang. It's just like, and then they really go into the, we just need that 1849 demographic. It's very important to us. I love that part. But no, again, what more can you say about Deadpool except if you haven't seen the DiGiorno's commercial, that's out there too. But aside from that, speaking of Marvel, we do have some trailers, including, um, I want to start before we get to Captain America and get our thoughts on that. Um, we do got to talk about Agatha because, well, if you haven't seen her trailer for uh, for Marvel's Agatha all along, you should definitely be interested, especially if you're a fan of, um, let's see, what they say? Hocus Pocus, Witches of Eastwick, uh, Death Becomes Her, um, The Craft. Anyway, you'll get the references I'm talking about once you see the trailer. But, Joe, anything you want to add to that before we play it? Uh, reminds me of the Evil Dead. That also. Anyway. Here's Marvel. Here's a uh, Marvel Television's Agatha all along. Another beautiful day. Surprised to see you out here, Detective. Jane Doe, found her down here by the water. Cause? Blunt force trauma. What happened to you? I have a lead in the case, but can't shake this feeling. I'm seeing it wrong. Is this really how you see yourself? That witch is gone, leaving you trapped in her distorted spell. Claw your way out.
I miss the glory days. She took every bit of power I had, but I can be that witch again. Well, the gang's all here. Let's hit the road. I'm gonna walk the witch's road. The road is a death wish. Join me. What witch in her right mind would join Agatha Harkness's coven? <gasps> Not looking for right-minded witches as it happens. Sweetheart, you okay? Oh my God! Whoa, where's she going? Where's she going? Okay, so that, guys, was the trailers for uh, Marvel Television's Agatha All Along. Um, as you can see, a two-episode premiere, uh, September the 18th. Uh, I'm hooked. And I'm going to be honest, I am so proud of Disney slash Marvel um, actually taking risk. This is not going to be... Um, I can put this over so nicely. It's not blue sky, you know, happy action stuff. This is going to be kind of a darker story, and I'm okay with it because this is what we've been hoping for. You know, you kind of have to get away from the, I'm not going to say superhero stories, but if you can tell a story surrounding a character that may not be known very well, it can be successful. Don't believe me? Ask James Gunn. He did very well with Guardians of the Galaxy. So with this, um, again... I, I mean, the references I gave, Hocus Pocus, uh, Joe said Evil Dead. Uh, I've had others sit there and tell me East of, Witches of Eastwick. Again, I am just looking to see what Marvel can do with a character, like I said, not very well known. However, because of her connection to Wanda and WandaVision, it does give an opening to see where her character story does go. But I'm hooked. But Joe, anything you want to add to that? Well, if we look really slowly at the trailer... The one a Wanda is dead. Mm -hmm. We don't know which well, we know which one. It's the one from not the superpowered by Cathan Wanda. This looks to be like the mom who had her two kids Wanda was killed and dumped in the woods. Yeah. Seems weird. Uh I believe one of the little boy that is one of the little boys. Mm -hmm. uh, older. I may be mistaken about that. Uh, being Agatha sidekick, that uh, kid there, although it could... I think that is one of the two actors that played the twins. So you think one of them could be Wiccan? No, he's most definitely Wiccan. There's no way around it. Uh, it's possible this could lead us to standard Wanda, standard universe Wanda, uh, because... She ain't dead. I don't care how much Marvel says it. A red poof in a crumbling tower does not equal dead. This is the Marvel <laughs> Universe. No body, not dead. And even sometimes, even if you got a body, you still ain't dead. Yeah, I mean, come on. We, we all know Wanda's not dead. As I for mean... the show itself, sorry. Uh, as for the show itself, um, kind of got some evil dead vibes where it's a horror comedy. Uh mm -hmm. I hope it stays that route and doesn't drift too far off into the comedy aspect of it. I want this to be kind of a funny, creepy thing. Mm -hmm. How do I, put this? I want it to be the new Sabrina. I don't want it to be the old Sabrina series. So you want to mix the two? No, I want it to be fully the new Sabrina. Okay, so that was on that was on the full on horror edgy side. Yeah, horror edgy, but some comedy clearly. Oh, okay. Like the two, like the two aunts sitting out on the okay. porch going "Hail Satan," stuff like that. Okay, gotcha. But I, I don't gotcha. want it to drift over into a Melissa Joan Hart one, except for the fact when her uncle was Shang Tsung. Gotcha. No, that makes sense, and I'm and I'm the same way. I do want it to, like I said, 
I want Marvel to stick with the horror side. I want them to stick to that side and tell a story. I don't want it to have to say, you know, I don't want you to water it down. I don't want you to to make it kid friendly because there are some stories in Marvel that are not kid friendly. And I am not against the fact of them wanting to push the envelope. So um, we'll definitely see come September the 18th um, for the first two episodes and really go from there. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. But the other Marvel, the other Marvel trailer that did drop um, today, actually, because, you know, um, we weren't we weren't expecting this. And I'm talking about Captain America Brave New World. Um, for all for as you guys know, Harrison Ford uh, did actually take on the role of Ross. There were reshoots, um, which gave some people pause. But the trailer has been released. And I'm going to be honest, um, before I play it. I'm just going to say I'm, my faith has been restored. But, Joe, anything you want to add to it before we play the trailer? I really wanted Seth Rollins and the Serpent Society to be there. Didn't we all? But if you haven't seen it, guys, here's a trailer for Captain America Brave New World. Wilson. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for the invite, sir. I have to admit, I'm still getting used to the new look. They said to lose the mustache or lose the election. You and I, I haven't always agreed in the past, but I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position. And if we disagree on how to manage this situation, then what happens? Work with me, Sam. We'll show the world a better way forward. Your inner circle's been compromised. Either you can't see that, or you don't want to. What is this a trap? Global power is shifting. You're just a pawn. You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. All I can say is this gives me Winter Soldier vibes, and I am not complaining. Um, that, guys, you can see was the trailer for Captain America Brave New World. will be in theaters, uh, if you believe it, February 14th, 2025th. <laughs> so I guess it's Valentine's Day. But, again, um, to take away from this, guys, um, if this is the direction they're going into, kind of giving a Winter Soldier feel, I'm not complaining. I love the fact that we are going to see Harrison Ford as now President Ross, because, again, he does become president in the storyline. Um and you're going to see the next Falcon, of course, the guy that was, uh, I've got his name already, who played also a side of uh, Sam Wilson's character in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So he's basically going to be taking over Falcon, the Falcon mantle. Um, and of course, to see Isaiah Bradley uh, also get his role. And again, how it looks like he may or may not have attacked President Ross. And at the very end, we see Red Hulk. I mean, what, what more can we say of this, Joe? Uh, we also saw uh, Juan Carlos Esposito. Yeah, um, I, what role has he been cast in? I have a, I have a, I have a guess. I they, they didn't say officially because I was trying. I, I say he's bad news, Pete. You say I who? Think I think he's basically the the ex Shield soldier, ex Shield uh, soldier. Knows bad news, Pete, because his connection to almost everybody uh, in the MCU, and I keep thinking he's him. Because they did not say, they still haven't said who uh, John Carlos Pudino's play, uh, who uh, Mr. John Carlos' character is. They didn't say his. They didn't say his name. They didn't say the character. All you see is a guy that looks like he might be the main protagonist, or at least close to it. But that's my guess. Because, like they said, because according to Mr. Esposito, he said um, nobody will really figure this out 
at the same time, he also has a television series. So this movie is not the only thing he's going to be in. So whoever he is, whoever he is casted as, I'll give it to Marvel. They they must have got the same people that was on the GTA League because nobody has said anything about his character. But the movie, the tone, I mean, it looks great. I just hope, and I'm going to be honest, I kind of hope it gets a harder rating than PG. I, I'm I'm okay with PG-13. I'm okay if you even, if you even go edgier. Well, dare I say that Deadpool Deadpool may not be the only radar movie. Do I think it's gonna get radar? No, because it's gonna be this is gonna basically be uh geared toward uh young adults and kids. So at most PG, maybe PG 13, maybe PG 13 is pushing it. But I mean overall, I'm I'm hooked. But uh what about you? No, I got the same vibes from it. Definitely Winter Soldier has more of a political thrower with some superheroes rather than a superhero movie with some political thrower. It's nice we're getting to see. I, I, the one thing I don't like mm -hmm. is uh, Sam getting a Steve more Steve esque uniform, where I'm moving away from the Sam uniform. I yeah. think that's the biggest issue I have because when I think Sam Wilson Captain America, I think white uniform. I don't think blue. Yep. Um, I'm guessing that's because he. Takes the president up on his offer and he has to get the standard government issue captain uniform. So I'm wondering if it's going to go white uniform, blue uniform, white uniform. And that makes me think that's what that's going to be too. Because I said the same thing. It's like, you know, when you saw the, and let's be honest, it's the Wakanda, it's the Wakanda suit. But still, you expected to see the white and blue suit. And seeing the more toned down overall blue suit that's i i agree with you that might have been this is us giving you the john walker treatment in a way without the disrespect last whooping but i completely agree i think that's where the suit comes into place because i know the first time it was showing pictures of it a lot of people were sitting there going wait a minute is this why why are we why are we changing the suit so i get it if it's if it's a red herring it's a red herring if this is just a part of the story i'm willing to rock with it but Red Hulk, I, I got to ask this question, Joe. Do we think that they're going to keep it the same, that we will see Ross as Red Hulk? Well, yeah, we have to. That's he, He's there. We, we don't get, that's not really the option. No, I'm confused by the question. Well, no, we see, it's just the fact – well, here's what I'm saying. Because do we think – I guess the better question I'm asking you is, do we think Marvel will divert giving Red, giving Red Hulk's identity to somebody else? No. No, it's okay. too synonymous with Thunder with Thunderbolt Ross. Hmm. Um, it's too bad that like Hulk is relegated to uh, team ups. Yeah, because I do want to see the Red Hulk Green Hulk fight. Yeah, uh, that we write, and I, I I use this very very lightly because you know we're me and you always preach never say this, but I think we deserve a Red Hulk Green Hulk fight. I think mm -hmm. that's something that we are owed as Marvel as Marvel patrons. Yeah, I, I don't say that lightly. Uh, again, because we preach never say that, but <laughs> but it's okay to be honest. We do want to see a red. We do want to see a green and red Hulk fight. We do want to see it. Definitely want to see Vietnam Cap go up against Red Hulk. I I'm fairly certain we all know how that fight's gonna go because of Isaiah's age and how mm -hmm. funky his powers are but i right. do want to see that fight um be mm. i oh, mean no. this it, definitely will lead into um thunderbolts because i guarantee you if he remains president he's gonna like all right government sanctioned uh avenger out government sanctioned team thunderbolts yeah it would make sense although thunderbolts is still is Thunderbolt still slated to come out in 2025 or 2026? They've gone through so much stuff, I'm not sure anymore. But still, this this does have heavy, will probably have heavy repercussions moving forward uh, on in the Earth scale amount mm -hmm. of the Marvel Universe. So I have no doubt this will dovetail into Thunderbolt. And then yeah. the next movies will cover other aspects of what's going on. Yeah, I can see that. But 
still, it's it still looks good. I I'm I my faith has been restored in that everybody was worried about the next Captain America movie, but if this is the route they go, I'm freaking sold. Um, but yeah. But before we get to our last trailer, because like I said, we just had a few of them this. We have a few of them this week. Before we get into some news into our comics, PlayStation Plus people, um, because I can say that now because I have a PlayStation Five. I just haven't had a chance to play it. But you, PlayStation Five people, um, the new catalog for July starting. Uh, these are all playable July sixteenth, so that would be sometime next week. The games that are going to be available on premium and extra. Jack, um, oh excuse me. The Jackbox Party Pack number nine, Remnant two, Mountain Blade two, Bannerlord, Crisis Core, Final Fantasy seven Reunion, and Pathfinder. I'm gonna scroll down for that one. That's too small a reading. Uh, let me just scroll down to what that one is. Thank you, Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, and No More Heroes, <laughs> along with Traveler Strikes Again, No More Heroes Complete Edition, uh, Deadcraft, Steep. Wow, I haven't seen Steep in a long time. And also on the PlayStation Premium VR Classics, you have Job Simulator, Summoner. Ooh, wow. That's a long time ago. Um, Ratchet and Clank Size Matters, uh, Jean the Arc. Oh, really? Um, that'll be available in the uh VR and premium. So again, not a bad, not a bad haul this not a bad haul this month. Um no, we got some banger stuff this this month. Yeah. Um, I just I need to play Remnant 2. I've been hearing nothing but great things about it. Um, Jackbox, if you've never if you've done a Jackbox game, they're just fun. They're fun to play with a party pack. Let's just be you're honest. You're just there, you're just there to play a non-sponsored version of uh what's that one card game, everybody that's cyber offensive? Cards against humanity. Yeah, you're just there to play a digital version. Turn whatever game you're playing into a Cards Against Humanity game. That's all it is. Yeah, still fun though. Uh, no more heroes because I just remember that. I just remember that from Nintendo. That was fun. Um, I really want to play three. Say what? I really want to play three. I still got. I still have to. I still have to get to that eventually. Um, now, Crisis Core Final Fantasy Seven Reunion. I still want to play that. I have yet to have a chance to play that, so I, I'm looking forward to that. And Pathfinder, again, I can't speak on that, and I can't speak on Mountain Blade 2 Bear Lore, but I can assume if they're on a catalog, somebody plays them. But all of these will be available depending on your PlayStation Plus subscription, July 16th. Um, anything we more anything we want to add to that uh, on that one, Joe? Well, we can segue by talking about subscriptions into our next big news item. Oh, yeah. If you're if you're a Microsoft fan, you're gonna be mad. Um, yes, because Game Pass, you know, the one thing that we basically told Microsoft that you got right, the same thing that we told Microsoft, hey, making day one games available on Game Pass was actually a great idea. The fact that you sat there and saw PlayStation go through all these tier subscriptions and looked and laughed and said, ha ha, you're just you're basically trying to do what we've done. Well, apparently Microsoft decided to take a page out of PlayStation because starting July 10th, actually two days ago. These price changes will go into effect for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, Pass Core, and PC Game Pass. Here's the problem. Um, Game Pass for console will no longer be available for new members. Members who are already subscribed to Game Pass for console uh, have automatic payment renewal enabled will be able to continue their membership. So if you do have Game Pass for console and you have auto pay, you're grandfathered in until that removes. However, here's the problem that a lot of people are going to be very, very um, perturbed, if you will. Oh, no. So I, hold up. Before we get into that, okay. so I listened to Video Game Apocalypse today. Mm -hmm. It's even worse than we thought. Oh, Lord. So <laughs> while we, before we get into the price tiers, because remember, Xbox was very simple on Game Pass. You either had games for gold or you had ultimate that was it right. right uh you could also go out and prepay ahead you get like however many years and pay it outwards and mm -hmm. they're only doing as of two days ago you can only pay in advance 13 months ahead only now if you've gotten more outward prior to that mm -hmm. they will honor that but for anybody who's trying to get ahead of this deal it's too late uh, you can only get 13 months advanced subscription service. 
Uh, but what do they what do they say? This basically <laughs> was the net, and I'm quoting Video Game Apocalypse. God bless those guys. Mm -hmm. They do the hard work, so I can just uh, copycat them here on the show. But I always at least I will always at least credit my stuff. Uh, the best quote I've heard is this took uh, what was initially Netflix for video games and turned it into every streaming service with ad tiers. Fully agree with that. Fully agree with that analogy. I fully agree with it. Because yeah, it's that bad. And people, and this is the thing is, if you don't believe me, let me just let me just give you, let me just read off individual tiers on this. Yeah, the, the tiers is what's gonna kill you. So uh Xbox Game Pass standard tier for new members, $15 a month. Will not include access to day one releases, EA Play, Game Pass for PC, and cloud gaming. 15 bucks a month, and you don't get access to you only get access to the library. However, the library is limited if you cut out EA Play and Game Pass for PC, which means that you cannot use this for PC gaming. And forget glad forget saves because you don't have access to cloud gaming. For 15 bucks a month, Game Pass Ultimate will be going um, again. Includes everything um, that are there. Basically, what a lot of people have, because you know, for a lot of us, we were happy paying 19.99 a month. However, that that price uh, is a, that price is going from uh, 17 dollars a month to 20 dollars a month. And Xbox Game Pass Core, which offers online access, and of course, the library is smaller. Is going from a yearly subscription of $60 to $75. And of course, if you do want to get it monthly, you still can get it for $10. PC Game Pass is increasing its uh, pricing from $10 a month to $12, but that PC Game Pass will still include day one releases. So, um, as Joe so eloquently put it, welcome to Netflix with ads. Now, here's here's my thing, and I say this all the time. I don't understand why Microsoft is doing this outside the fact that they are trying to squeeze more money. They're trying to squeeze more money out of gamers. Now, again, if the if uh, like Joe said, you either had gold or you had ultimate, people could actually pick and choose what they wanted to go buy. That's fine. I know for me, I loved ultimate. I love the library. I love the fact I can play online. I love the fact it was only it was only ninety. It was a uh, sixteen seventy dollars a month. Cool. I was glad to pay that. Now, is it going to $20 a month? Will that deter me? No, because it's a $3. It's a $3 increase for Ultimate. I still get everything I want. I'm paying $3 more. Okay, fine. I'll live with it. Here's the scapegoat of it all. That initially, you had day one access for standard, for core, and PC Game Pass. So regardless of the tiers, you all had day one access. Now Microsoft is sitting there saying, nah, we're giving you too much. We're not getting, we're not getting a return on our investment. And do I think that this will turn off some uh some Xbox people? Yes. Because, well, now this is basically you trying to, and Mr. File Max beat me to the punch. Um, it's the result of Microsoft spending without a solid plan to recoup those costs. A hundred percent correct. So here's some of the other things that we can gauge on th that they have not said, but again, mm -hmm. they get brought up. Um, let's look at Starfield. Uh -huh. Day one and release. Uh, it more people went and bought individual copies than did getting Game Pass. So it did not help Game Pass move forward. Right. Uh, it barely barely moved the needle for Microsoft. Here's the other part there that is very suspiciously not there. Mm -hmm. Notice how they're not talking about who and who's not getting Call of Duty in this. Pretty much. After, that, after the acquisition, after their after their uh, Activision acquisition, and how many and how many players were were mortified that you know. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, PlayStation players may have been mortified that Microsoft may turn this into an exclusive and basically hoard them. That's gonna be interesting. Um, but you know, you're 100 right. They're sitting there and they're sitting there. They're what they're not saying is what we really should be concerned about. But my thing is, is just the fact that Microsoft, you really had a corner of the market with day one games. You really did. 
and you, for reasons beyond my comprehension, chose to try to squeeze that little part out because what you're basically trying to make people do is go to LT. That's the, that's the end game, if you really want to be honest. You want everyone to go to ultimate because at that most at that at that tier, if you will, you're getting the most bang for your buck out of your users. Now, I know for a lot of people that might not be what you want. That's fine, um, but ultimately, that's the plan. You're basically going to squeeze everything you can because, well, basically, you you're you're a profit hog. Let's just call it what it is. Um, now, here's the thing. Microsoft may shoot themselves in the foot because if your day one games are, well, let's just be honest, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League level, you might have a lot of people canceling their subscriptions. And then that might backfire on you because at least you're making your money off the core pass and PC game pass because folks are still playing the day one games. You're kind of bankrolling a lot on the fact that these day one games are going to entice people to upgrade their subscriptions. Don't think it'll happen. But that's the gamble. But yeah, I was like, I was, I was like, Microsoft, you were, you were meant to bring balance to the force. Not you were meant to bring balance, not destroy it. <laughs> you were not. The other issue it. I think is is mm -hmm. a lot of developers really don't like day one on Game Pass because that undercuts their bottom line. Because mm -hmm. that means no one's going to go out and buy the game. They're just going to go get it on Game Pass. And I don't Which, know how I don't I do and you know guys, I'm gonna talk. This is kind of talking out of my butt because I don't know how digital sales of day one Game Pass are actually translated to uh, actual sales. But like mm -hmm. I guarantee you, probably cuts into the cuts into those developer profit margins. It does. I mean, I would have to think, but also these also these are probably the same developers that were absorbed by Microsoft. So yeah. you know that's also that too, but. I just, I just think at that moment, this might be a little bit of real them being greedy, really. Um, but they're banking on the fact that those day one games are going to keep people enticed. Will it? Will it not? We, you know, remains to be determined. But again, dang, Microsoft, of all the things you could have done, that's what you do? Yeah, you can see why people might be slightly miffed at you. Um, but again, we'll see. But uh, moving right along, guys, to, like I said, not a lot of news this week. We do have one more trailer, um, just because we weren't expecting Captain America, uh, Brave New World. We were not expecting Gladiator 2, and I'm going to be honest with you, watching this trailer, I actually might actually watch it, just because Denzel Washington basically played Trading Day Denzel Washington in a Roman movie. You'll see what I'm getting at very soon. I remember that day. I never forgot it. That a slave could take revenge against an emperor. Where were you born? I don't know. I never knew a mother nor a father. You will be my instrument. Who are you? Did you hear that crowd? The greatest temple. Rome ever built the Colosseum because this is what they believe in power. <laughs> General Acacius, there are victories yet still to come. Rome has so many subjects, she must feed them. They can eat war. <laughs> Turn slaves into gladiators, the gladiators into free men. You have something. You, I knew it from the start. Did you now? Rage. <laughs> that rage is your gift. This is about survival! <laughs> Survive! Hold together and when it charges, break for the wall. Whose head could I give you that would satisfy this fury? The entire Roman armies. Too much. The general will do. Human beings in my mind. 
Bro must fall. And he'd only give it a push. <laughs> we'll make it out alive. All right, all right. Tears on the mausoleum floor. Blood stains the Colosseum door. This ring belonged to Maximus. Now I give it to you. What is the dream of Rome? Blood People are not free. I was owned. Now I will control an empire. I will not waste another generation of young men for their vanity. Strength and honor! This is our own treason, hero! Tears on the mausoleum floor. Blessings the Colosseum doors. Sorry, guys. So that was the trailer for Gladiator 2. Um, as you can see, we'll be November's uh, theaters November 22nd. Now, again, I have sat there and said that, you know, I was worried because I love the first Gladiator. I thought Russell Crowe did an amazing job. I thought Joaquin Phoenix played a great, uh, uh, great villain. Um, the fact that I think it was almost now four years ago, four or five years ago, give or take a number, give or take a number that really Scott want to do a sequel to Gladiator 2, and everybody's like, not really sure where you're going to go with on this one. Um, trailer does look good. I kind of got I kind of got train day vibes because Denzel was kind of like, I just want to just overthrow the Empire. And you got an unknown character that apparently really remembers Maximus. And Mr. Final Max is kind of curious how they got from Gladiator to the sequel. Me too! Um, just because of how the first one ended. But I'm gonna be honest. It looks the action looks great. I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, um, come over to watch it. But uh, Joe, any thoughts on that? Uh, that new character's name is probably gonna turn out to be Judah Ben Hur. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I thought you were gonna go with Spartacus for a second, but but no. Um, oh God. I just you He's know just. I mean, it would be it would be interesting and corny at the same time, but still, but no, uh, it does, I mean, like I said before, it's gonna they they're them explaining the story, um, the sequel wise and how it relates to the first one. Yeah, that's gonna be a little hard to pull off. Is the action gonna be there? Yes. Who doesn't love gladiator fights? I mean, they have to go extreme. I mean, the first one was the first one was tigers. This is now with rhinos. I'm. I mean, we're gonna see. But again, I'm just looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, Joe, anything else you want to add to that besides Denzel just being Denzel? Why, why is this even the thing? Hey, look, look at this way we could have another Winnie the Pooh murder movie. Oh, beats it having a cowboy movie, so sure. I'm just saying, we, we could have what, what they call that blood and honey, <laughs> blood and honey part two. <laughs> I think we could have that. Made into a comic that's crossing over with the Bambi, Bambi horror movie. I still want a Where's Waldo serial killer movie. That's just me. That, that that to me makes sense. Why not do a character that you have to find, and he finds you and he kills you? The mystery goes on. It's like Freddy Krueger with a picture book. It writes itself. But I I digress. Um, and you're right. They did put a bow in the Coliseum, and then that actually showed in the trailer too. Um, but yeah. It just it just looks like it's gonna be over the top, and that's fine. I can dig it and work with it. Um, also, uh, like I said before, we like I said we don't really have a lot of news outside of a uh, possible Double Dragon coming out, but we don't really have a lot of news on that. That's just kind of uh, been put out there in the uh, put out there in the burst to see who actually gets attention to. Inside Out Two was actually a good movie. Um, I actually went to go actually went to go see it with kids, so that was definitely fun. And uh, yeah. College football, CA Sports is going to be making its way back. That's going to be the, that. I can't wait for the chat rooms on that one. But oh, there is one other thing I did want to talk about, Joe, before we uh, go into comics. And I wanted your opinion on this. Um, X Men, and then it just, it just popped in my head. X Men 97. 
Um, again, we ha- actually, I'll take this back. That was a terrible segue. X Men 97 actually has a new writer. Um, this writer was uh, Matthew Chauncey, who actually wrote for Marvel's What If. Um, he's actually going to be taking over uh, season two of Marvel's X Men 97, which has been very well received. Um, because Bayo De Mayo, which we all thought he was coming back, we all thought that he was talking with everybody after each episode, giving everybody homework to actually, you know, get prepared for the series, which we did find out that, you know, he's not coming back. So Matthew Chauncey is taking over uh, for the next season, and it seems that um, he's already done, they've already done some rewrites um, as they're setting up for season two. Now, Here's the one thing, Joe, I want to ask you, because, again, um, we talked about X-Men 97 on here from beginning to end. Um, we both thought it was great. Um, because now it's got a different writer. And don't get me wrong. Marvel's What If series has been great. Should we be worried that we're not going to get the same caliber of writing? Or is it the fact that, hey, this guy's this guy's already proven himself. Let's give him a shot with this. Well, DeMeo already did season two and gave mm-hmm. a lot of the scripts and outline and drafts. So my question is, is we know where season two starts. Depending on where season and three, this can go multiple different ways. Because this dude's going to be the main writer for season three and probably mm-hmm. season four, the final season. Mm-hmm. So like, it's just kind of dependent on how season two ends. Uh, and what they set up for the coming down the road. Right. This guy's fine in the grand scheme of things. He wrote decent decent stuff, what material he was allowed to use, because, you know, guys, you have to have permission to use certain things and whatnot, because uh, Feige does have a continuity, uh, is a continuity snob, mm-hmm. even though he's wrong about what world this is, but, you know, both... Me and Miss Marvel will always be there to correct them. <laughs> um, but, you know, like I said, you got to know, we need to know where season two ends. Right. If it ends in, like, Days of Future Past, probably not this dude. If it ends in Krakoa, maybe. If it ends somewhere else, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Where's another good one to do it? If it somehow ends in House of M, okay, we are in his will house because that is a what if style universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just need to know where season two ends. So that's going to make the world a difference with this writer because we know Brian DeMeo had his hands in season two. So we can confidently say we're fine. Even with the scripts being revised, mm-hmm. it's still his overall vision until we get to season three, then season three is its own thing. So, like I said, if we end up in someplace darker, maybe not this guy, because the darkest he got was Marvel Zombies, which was fine. It was, but it was but more... Like, he's, he's looking... This dude, I, I want to say, is a bit more grandiose and whatnot, and don't get me wrong, he did a great job. We've had... Ultron Supreme, Peg Supreme, mm-hmm. uh, Sin- uh, Sinister Strange, great characters, some very small, great worlds for a very small amount of time, but those are different worlds in small bites, not a whole mm-hmm. overarching season. So, like, and this dude's strong suit is what if to us. I don't know yep. what else he's done. So, if it leads into House of M, I think we're safe with this dude. If it leads into anything else, I don't know. Need more Bruce Campbell and Marvel Zombies. Yeah, I could I could see that. But he no, was I'm, there. He was the reason for it. Well, I mean, he was there in wasn't he there in uh uh I'm trying to remember the exact scene. Right before Cap right before uh Captain America showed up. As a zombie, wasn't he the person? Wasn't he the one the, voicing one of the uh, characters? Probably, but I mean, like in the comics, Ash is the reason for the Marvel zombies. Yeah, he is. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I'm 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 willing to give the guy a shot. Like I said, I mean, like you said, 
he established himself on what if as a writer. So the man can write episodes. Um, could he write them to the could he write him? I mean, we're let's let's kind of be honest. We're not going to possibly get the same degree of of production per se as far as writing goes. I mean, they're gonna throw budget wise, animation should be good. Animation, that area of design should be fine. The writing that we were getting, um, it's gonna be. I want to say that it's gonna be slightly different, but it just depends on how they go with. Like you said, it depends on where they, it depends on where they start. Um, but I'm willing to give the guy a shot to see, actually see what he does because, like I said, X Men '97 can open the doors to other animated series. We keep hoping. Um, it's just kind of a wait and see moment. So. So, uh, with that being said, we are going to go ahead and move on to our comic pools, guys. Uh, but before we do that, we always do want to show love to Rick's Comic City. If you haven't been to Rick's Comic City in the Nashville area, especially if you're in the Middle Tennessee area, you definitely should. Um, they show us love because we show them love. They have been Nashville's number one go-to place for comics, collection, uh, collector items, anime, mangas, you name it. Um, Bethany didn't been doing that for like the uh, number one for the last seven years. They have two locations, one in Nashville, one in Clarksville, Tennessee. Definitely check them out. And of course, their web shop there at BriggsComicCity.com. Let them know the guys that get bit sent you. It doesn't get you any discounts, but again, you see our mugs on their television. So they show us love. So we want to show them love. And kids, we have said this many a times on the show. Um, read the band books. We know you guys right now are enjoying summer vacation, at least for the next couple of weeks anyway, before you go back. Um, you're probably going to notice in your you're probably going to notice in your library or wherever you do get your books. Um, there's going to be a section for there's going to be in librarians who set this up a section called banned books. Do yourself a favor, read them because there's something in banned books you definitely should know. They don't want you to know to expand your mind, expand your creativity. Reading is fundamental. I cannot stress that enough as an adult. So please, guys, read the banned books, support your local library, support your local comic book stores. And if you're in the Nashville area, definitely support Rick's Comic uh, Rick's Comic City. Trust me, you will miss these places once they're gone. But um, but Joe, I see that you're uh, setting up so much for the comics, right? Are we not talking about BoardCon? Uh, I was going to kind of say that toward the end, but... Uh, oh, okay. I was yeah. just like, why are we not talking about it? It's in the title. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's that's more of a plug, but I was saving that toward the end, <laughs> just because. Um, just because, again, um, our other partner, Tafari TV, he's currently at Blurcon. Um, so uh, again, if you are in the Washington D.C. area, uh, definitely check out Blurcon. It is happening right now. If you do see Tafari TV or uh, Chris Fury or Lady Mandalore or Geek by Heart. Um, just some of the names that are associated uh, with us uh, in Blurred's Eye View. Definitely check them out. Say hi. Um, be kind. Don't make it creepy. That's all I'm asking for. But again, um, BlurCon is going on. If you don't know what BlurCon is, um, let me just show you guys really quickly. Um, BlurCon is a con that is currently going on in Washington, D.C. Um, basically, the term is Summer Madness. It just started this Friday, uh, July 14th, and will go on until Sunday on the 14th. Um, you can definitely still purchase your badges there, guys, and you can go on their site at BlurCon TV, or you can go on to the BlurCon, uh, you can actually go on to the BlurCon site on YouTube, and there's actually a stream going on right now through Blur Station that you can actually watch interviews and things of that nature. So if you're not able to make the BlurCon, or if you're not in the Washington, D.C. area, definitely go to BlurCon.com, look up BlurCon on YouTube, and you'll be able to see all the festivities, interviews, and things of that nature. So definitely check it out. But again, if you are in the Washington, D.C. area, guys, I implore you, check it out. Again, if you've never been to a con, you highly should. They're definitely fun. So, um, but yeah. But with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to our comp pulls of the week. So I see Joe, you're queued up. Uh, whenever you're ready, sir. Uh, first off, we got Absolute Power, written by Mark Wade, art by Dan Mora, and letters by Alejandro Sanchez. This is a big summer event for DC, which turns out to be very akin to a Marvel event when you read it. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, Amanda Waller is finally putting a stop to all superheroes as she deems everybody a threat because she's just so tired of being rewritten by the crisis. 
We don't <laughs> even know if she's the Viola Davis uh, uh, or the dancing isekai version of Amanda Waller anymore. She doesn't even know. Just, just my fault. Um, I got that out of my head. It's not my fault. That what song about? is a banger. Uh, <laughs> just when I thought I got that out of my head. <laughs> Such a great song by Dad. Yeah. Um. So she's deploying uh, AI news media to make the superheroes seem like they've gone nuts and started massacring general populace. Meanwhile, she is putting out Task Force 7, which is version of power sucking, power draining uh, Amazobots and just slowly picking off Justice League and the Justice Society. Pretty much the Earth's, Earth's superhero community nullifying their powers. Uh, and then imprisoning them. And it's really good, but for whatever reason, and this is how good this book is, even though mm -hmm. I do say it's a Marvel thing. In Marvel, this is issue one for this event. In Marvel, right. this is issue four of six, where things get real bad right before the heroes turn these things around. In DC, this is issue one, where things get real bad, and they're only going to get worse, probably. Yeah. Although I, will give it, although I will give it to her, I will give it to the right to the to how they're setting this up. The fact that she literally has arguably two of the most well, three well, yeah, three of the most powerful beings, and yet she has them under her control. I'm not gonna say who because I don't want to spoil it. I highly recommend that you know you guys do read Absolute Power because. I did not see this coming on how they set this up. Although the although if you really look at the picture that Joe's putting up there, you kind of can see two other characters right there that are basically under that you know have something to do with it. But again, I do like the I do like what they're going with this. I do like where they're going with this so far. The only thing I will say is that one DC character is hard to believe as far as their position in the story. I will just leave it at that. Plus, is Dan Mora doing God's work with art? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I missed, I missed one page, but we are looking at the cover for... We are looking at the interior for Task Force number seven. Uh, Task Force... Mm -hmm. set, uh, bleh, Task Force seven number one, Last Sun. Uh, each issue is going to be about one of the Amazobots. This is based around the Superman Amazobot, uh, known as Last Son. This is written, written by Leah Williams with art by Caitlin Yar uh, Yarsky and colors by Alex Gumries. Basically, he, Amanda has deployed the Superman, Ama Superman Amazobot Last Son with Parasite against Parasite's uh, will and consent to the mm -hmm. Rock of Attorney to ensure that they have full um, control over the Rock Attorney and all of its magical contents, mm -hmm. as well as to ensure the capture of Billy Batson and the Marvel, Marvel family. Good fight. We learn what's probably going to be the undoing of this entire bout because while fighting Black Adam, uh, it seems like the last son has murdered Parasite. And he yeah. starts to feel bad about it. And Magda's like, oh, when you take their powers, you don't just take the powers. You kind of take uh, other attributes. Mm -hmm. And man, nobody likes anybody dying worse than Superman. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, I'll say good book. This kind of hints at what will be the undoing of all the Amazos or Waller's plan potentially already. But, you know, that's just seed hinted at. Mm -hmm. Um, I enjoyed it. Oh no, it was definitely that. Um, like I said, I was worried at first because again, whenever DC does some sort of crossover event, you know, we didn't really need another Night Terrors and uh, Infinite Crisis is either hit or miss. But I do like Absolute Power. I do like where it's going with this. I just hope they keep that pace up. I hope. It's a very small amount of time too, so it's not like, not like night. It's not like night terrors where night terrors interfere with every book, right? 
like just ground all the storylines to a halt. Like in these books, like we're about to look at Green Lantern. Green mm -hmm. Lantern's overall still story is still moving forward. It says Earth is dealing with absolute power, but everything else going on in space is still the Green Lantern story. Gotcha. Yeah. So at least it, so at least it doesn't feel like everything's tied into one event. So it makes sense. Yep. Thank you to which Green Lantern uh, number thirteen absolute power tie in. Uh, Amanda Waller has King Shark beating the crap out of Hal Jordan because uh, they're trying to learn how Hal Jordan had even got a ring and powered it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is written by Jeremy Adams with pencils by Fer uh, Fernando Parson, ink by Os Eau Claire Albert, and colors by Ramon Ramon Fernando Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so on Earth, how is captured and depowered? Uh, we don't know what happened with Carol. Uh, in space, Jessica Cruz catches up with Silek, and we see that uh, Kyle's in the corner, looking a little colorful as his uniform is literally shifting colors of all the rainbow. That man's about mm -hmm. to become a White Lantern again. Now, like, there is no other way to say this. We yeah. are also someone did something to Koger. Uh, Koger, so Sinestro still pissed, got the red ring, and now we have a new Lantern Corps being introduced. It's that. the Great Lanterns, the Corps of Sadness. I'm, I'm willing to Look, give it a shot. So, I'm here's how I shot. defend this. Here's okay. how I will defend this mm -hmm. Sadness is an emotion, yes. As much as I like the White Lanterns and the Black Lanterns, life and death are not emotion; they are states of being. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not, but sadness as a great. I'm just like you know what? I'll I'll give it a shot. Maybe just maybe 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 it gets explained. Maybe we see more of a demonstration. I'm willing to give it a shot. Yes, I mean, I'm fully on board. We have not, I mean, guys, we have not had a new Lantern Corps introduced since Robert Venditti took over and did made the other Lantern Corps or, mm -hmm. well, actually made the Yellow Lanterns an official thing. Right. But we have not had a new core, new core introduced since the Robert Venditti era where all the other, the red, the blue, the pink, the violet, the indigo, all that stuff got introduced. So, mm -hmm. you know, a new core coming in. That's fine. Sadness is an emotion that that tracks. It's part of an emotional spectrum. Sadness is on the range of emotions. So, you know, uh, so we get. Does that mean their anthem is that one black parade song from My whatever? Huh? Welcome, the black, Welcome to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. Yes, that's it. I can see that. <laughs> it's like every time they come in, just like that music immediately starts playing. Oh, at least the piano. I can see that. Heck, actually, you know what? I think we might get the writer's ideas. It'd be like <laughs> the might... Different Sports Evil Incorporated theme song. <laughs> I can kind of see that, but I can also see, I can see just why is there a piano playing every time we enter the room? Hey, y'all enjoy the Black Parade, in this case, the Great Parade. But no, I can see that. That would be actually be kind of funny. And then we also get some other stuff. We learn what Theos, the president of the United Federation of Planets, mm -hmm. what his big plan is and how he got raised and whatnot. Overall, a good issue. Um, I like where things are going in the Green Lantern, but now it's finally starting to turn around to where I enjoy it because it's focusing on a greater aspect of the universe. I mm -hmm. just don't like it when it's only focusing on... And it doesn't even have to just be how. I mean... Even when it was Kyle, it was Kyle. The book was about Kyle and Jen, or Kyle and the rebuilding the core, or Kyle, John, and Jen, yeah, or Alan. Like, I like when the world is about a universe or the core, I don't like it when it's about a single lantern. And even when it's how, I don't like we all know my thing with how and thing, but like, I like Adrian. that the book is moving. More or not away from how, but expanding beyond just how. Yeah, I can go with that. We all we we do know your hatred for Hal Jordan, though. 
Yes, I, I cannot stand him. He is so one note. Moving over to Marvel, uh, we are looking at the life of Wolverine. This is written by Jim Zub with art by Ramon Box and colors by uh, Java Tardigila. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at a new continuity line for Wolverine. It tells you from how his whole life has gone in the Marvel comics. We mm -hmm. usually do not look at Wolverine books because I am one of those few people that looked at Wolverine during the 90s like, he is oversaturated. I do not care for the small pointy stat man. This was not a contrarian take. It's just one of those things like he insists upon himself. Over yeah, the like years, I've like gotten over the years, <laughs> unlike Al, I've grown to appreciate him because he's become more nuanced of a character. Yeah. Uh, they they made him more than just stabby man, get mad. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, when you talk about old man Logan and then his time in Osaka and then, well, different aspects, so yeah. Which is the other super cool thing about this book mm -hmm. is if you go to the back, there's a full glossary that tells you what issues of the Wolverine comic were discussed or depicted in this episode, so you can go to mm -hmm. your local comic store, go to the dollar bin, go to the back issues, find those issues, and read those stories. And some of them That's, are pretty good. That is probably one of the greatest ways I've ever seen a comic book go help out a new reader mm -hmm. and help out your local comic book store ever. It's just like, oh, did you like this time when he was fighting with Captain America? Go read these issues. Right. Which it does That's help. Really oh, yeah. So yeah, imagine, like I said, uh, that just having a roadmap is always a great thing for reading, uh, especially for stories that when we tell people, of course, me, Joe, and others, we tell them, like, hey, that was a story that actually happened, and we can literally recite to the issue number. It's not because, you know, we're not considering ourselves authority figures. It's just the fact that we want to point you guys to the same things that we read. So that way... You get to write, you get to actually read it at your own pace. So, again, I love the idea of that being back there at the same time, it does guide folks on actually reading the story versus um, not knowing. Because, again, there's a lot of great stories out there. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Moving on over, we have uh, X Men Blood Hunt Psylocke One Shot. Uh, this mm -hmm. is written by Steve Fox with art by uh, Lynn Yoshi and colors by Ruth Redmond. Mm -hmm. Guys, this is just Psylocke and Jim Crow right after, not the Marauders, uh, the Zeb Wells team, uh, Mr. Sanders' team after Psylocke and uh, John Gray Crow kind of mm -hmm. like get into a relationship and leave the team. Mm -hmm. The end of it, they go to Japan and then they fight vampires. That's all this is. This is let's fight vampires and yokai and the smiling woman, smiling woman in Japan. That's all this is. It's not bad. Still, it's beautifully done. It's got yeah. good yokai lore, but in, in the end of the day, this is let's fight vampires in Japan. Pretty much. But still, it was it still was a good read. And the fact of I can't remember the guy's name who saved my life, uh half metal, half uh Half guy, I can't remember his name to save my life, but loved his take on everything. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll stay here with people. You deal with the smiling slit half snake lady. <laughs> Just that was funny. <laughs> Moving on over, we got Doctor Strange number seventeen. Mm -hmm. This is also Blood Hunt time. This is also the pin ultimate issue of Doctor Strange because after. Issue 18, mm -hmm. we're moving forward with potentially a different Doctor Strange book or a different book involving Stephen and Clea because there's potentially he may not be the Sorcerer Supreme at the end of Blood Hunt. Oh, yeah, because of uh, uh oh, shut up. We, we, we didn't say what happened the first night of the first one. I'm shutting up. Yeah, uh, this is written by Jed McKay with art by Pascal Freire and uh, cars by Heather Moore. The long story short, 
Uh, Mordo is trapped into the mirror world with Bats the Hound and Cleo's two snakes. Mm -hmm. We learn about the tiger god uh, for cats. So clearly there must be a dog god. So the goodest of boys gets its god. And Bats gets to become the goodest of all boys. And save mm -hmm. Dr. Strange who somehow removing the spirit of Steven's brother also cures his vampirism. Dog power. I'm going to go with magic. <laughs> I'm going to go with God dog power. power, dog god power, and magic. Yeah. And Baron Mordo just being the biggest A villain because, and I don't mean like A is like shorting word, like he's just being like the paramount villain of like, I have saved Strange because only I can kill Doctor Strange. Yep. That like, Mordo, that's Mordo to a T. He's like, let Strange, let Strange know he owes me. Wait, wait where are you going with that? What going with what? <laughs> just 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 let Strange know I've saved him. It's just um you didn't do sh okay. <laughs> that's still funny. Yeah, that's pretty much what this issue was. It wasn't bad. Uh it's fun to see Bats get like his biggest payoff ever because Bats the ghost dog is probably mm -hmm. one of the best new additions to Steven to uh, Do the Doctor Strange universe. Um, is this a really good issue? I'm going to be completely honest. Not really, because it is so out there and they really needed a, just a quick ride out of how to get Steven to not be a vampire for obvious reasons moving forward mm -hmm. that they never really solved it. Um, but it was funny. I mean, but yeah, but oh, you yeah, it was hilarious. Funny. Like the goodest of all boys is how you cure vampirism. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to read it, it's fine. It does tie into Blood Hunt very loosely and abstractly, but still it does. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see what happens in the next issue on this one. So, moving on over, we got Moon Knight number zero, The Fist of Conchu. This is written by Jim McKay with art by. Alejandro Capuccio and cars by Rachel Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So this is pretty much a primer that gets you caught up with all the Jed McKay series and sets you up with what's going on currently so mm -hmm. that in September when Moon Knight starts back up, you're caught up. But this is a book that's used to get you caught up, or this is also serves as a great jumping in point for new Moon Knight readers. That's yeah. what this book is. Which it was, which it was a good, a good introduction, especially if of everybody currently with the Midnight Mission, and then eventually, you know, still talking. It, it's almost if Conchu is kind of doing a. How can I put this there so nicely? Conchu is giving just a a current. Where are we now in the Moon Knight in the Moon Knight story? So I will say that, but no. You're right. It's a, it's a, it's a good catch up issue if you have never read Moon Knight or you haven't been keeping up what happened previously as far as his fight with the Order. Um, but yeah, it's a good it's a good starting point if you did want to hop back in. Moving on over, we have Annihilation twenty ninety nine. This is written by Steve Orlando, which we will be interviewing very soon, yeah. like a couple weeks very soon. Uh, yep. Art by Ab Abram Robertson and colors by Naraj Menon. Uh, we get to look at the Nova of 2099 as he comes to the aid of a small town uh, being assaulted by symbiote, uh, a gang, space gang that is being taken over by symbiotes. Mm -hmm. We learn the identity of this new Nova, which I don't really enjoy who they picked. I understand the reason why they picked Wolverine to be the last Nova or the new Nova, mm -hmm. but like, I, I disagree with that. I feel like we're in 2099. It could have been anybody. It could have been a descendant of Richard Ryder. It could right. have been Sam, El uh, well, maybe not Sam Alexander himself because he would be in his 80s by that point, but like family of Sam, 
again, this is just where I feel Wolverine, they use Wolverine when they just don't know, want to make a new character. But, you know, the costume is very cosplayable, and I probably will try and get this done at some point. But yeah, uh, the story is good. My only issue is that it's Wolverine as the le- one of the last Novas. But that's about it on, on that one. I do dig it. There's also an issue two floating out that just came out that deals mm-hmm. with Star Lord of 2099, who's a space Wakandan Empire refugee who's taken up the name and she's fighting Quasar the Living Sun. But like this issue, really good, really fun story. I just don't like that it's Wolverine. <laughs> Nova with claws. <laughs> yeah, he pops the claws after he runs out of Nova Force. Mm-hmm. It's just I admit it's weird. It is weird. It's fine. Like I uh, the annihilation thing is great. Uh and again, if you need 2099, you just call Steve Orlando. My my like I said, the biggest issue is just that it for whatever reason it's Wolverine. And the weird thing is, is I won and I'm gonna ask him this. Because mm-hmm. the last time we saw Nova in 2099, Nova was Conan. Yeah. Because remember, he was cursed to live forever if, until the feet, until the soil beneath his feet burned and went into the space near the sun and yeah. tossed the earth and it burned his feet and he got released from everything. So I wonder mm-hmm. if they had to use Wolverine because they couldn't use Conan. Probably so. I don't mean, it, that's I'm a, gonna it, ask it's, a possibility. Yeah. it's a good possibility that may actually been the entire case. I'm gonna have to ask Steve why this mate why it was Wolverine. <laughs> but now, good space book, I enjoy it. It's just my issues with it. Nice. Well, speaking of new things, brand new X Men. The X Men mm-hmm. have restarted. This is written by Jed McKay with. Penciled by Ryan Stegman, ink by J.P. Mayer, and color by Marty Garcia. Our X-Men are Cyclops, Beast, Magneto, Psylocke, uh, Japanese Psylocke, uh, Kid Omega, Temper, Magic, and Juggernaut. Mm-hmm. Um, we get reintroduced to a brand new team of X-Men. I like some of the new uniforms. I like that the assault team only consists of Mag- magic and juggernaut, and they have to they constantly lay rock, paper, scissors to see who gets to drop in first, even though they the only two on the team. That's uh, I love it so much. <laughs> um Temper, I'm not too familiar with, but I know she was around at one point during the yeah. Jean Grey, uh, during the Wolverine, when the two schools split between the Xavier Institute and the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning that Wolverine ran. Yep. Um, we do see that the man of the chair is Magneto, uh, being Magneto from X Men 97, telling the nice people of Alaska's like, we saved you. Don't make us regret us saving you. Don't let me let you down. That's I'm sorry. That yes, when reading that, that's what went through my head. Don't let me let you down. <laughs> pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the team are over in Roach's or Orch's base because they detected six mutant life seven mutant life signs. One of them is Wolverine, who just pretty much just tells Psychops. Yeah, I'm not doing this X-Men stuff for a while. I'm out. I'm getting my own mm-hmm. book. I'm not part of any of the teams. I'm out. <laughs> Although the whole the whole fourth the fourth uh echelon, fourth class, um, cannibalists. Okay, that's different. <laughs> it's like that's a little different. <laughs> so Roaches is making their own mutants where it's adults that attain mutant powers, which mm-hmm. is Bizarre, we maybe due to organ harvesting because Wolverine can you can basically have a whole organ facility out of a out of Wolverine, but pretty much good good start off. Jed McKay knows his X Men because again, Jed McKay remembers everything. Yeah, but uh, I like this version of the X Men. I'm excited to own it. Uh, I like this team. Uh, it's a good team mechanics. My only real issue I have with 
any of this book is how they drew Beast. It was very bizarre drawings of him. Beast, Beast looks like he went to Halloween with eyeliner. It looks like he went a little bit overboard with the high eyeliner. Yeah, that was my like, <laughs> only issue. I yeah, like that Cyclops is full of positive reinforcement for Juggernaut. It, 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 that was funny. It's like, yes, we know you're Charles's brother, but you can still do good. You're good. <laughs> it's like I this. am so proud of you right now. <laughs> still, that that it's odd, but it's funny. It's like we did not expect this from Summers. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. This was a great book. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious to see where they go with this. I do get X-Men 97 vibes from reading this, and I think it's only because it's still fresh. But yeah, I'm willing to give this a run. This, this feels like it's going to be a good one. Then moving on over, we got Transformers uh, written by Daniel Johnson with art by Jorge Cor uh, Corona. And colors by Mike Spicer. So let me tell you about how horrific uh, Shockwave is. And why there's Lucifer, there's Satan, and then there's Shockwave. <laughs> um, go ahead. Go ahead. I just like you laughing at this because you know I'm right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I've been making this joke for a while, but this this uh, this issue illustrates my point on why Shockwave is worse than the devil. <laughs> so the Autobots have finally found a way, steady way to repower their unit, repower other people. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost. They break the news to Will Jack that they lost Ratchet in, the, in another fight. Other things are happening. Decepticon land, they're also finding a way to power power their other, other friends back up. Um, I feel really bad for Ravage. I really do, yeah. because Soundwave is like, great, we can repower and restore and repair everybody. We can get Ravage, and Shockwave just takes Ravage's body and is like, we, we can, we, you can do better. We can make you new Cassetticon. Uh, Cassetticons and like starts taking Ravage over to a metal grinder to be uh, to be recycled. I'm like, this is how they get them to turn. This is how Optimus gets Soundwave to turn. He finds yeah. a way to fix Ravage. That's like still everybody up. is just like crapping on this poor Panther cat. It's still messed up. He's like he had great great intentions, but I'm like not the way you want to go about it. Uh, we also Just learned about Beachcomber, who is much like in the actual G1 cartoon. Total mm -hmm. pacifist, got taken out early in the fight, just decided, you know what? If everybody's asleep, they're not fighting, meaning I get peace and time. So he's basically been on Earth all this time and has Astro Train weighed down by chains who Astro Train is in this weird spot of I feel bad for him because he doesn't want to do any of this. But at the yeah. same time, he will kill Beachcomber if he gets the chance. Pretty much. He even tells, like, he even, like, sympathizes with Spike. It's like, look, I'm knowing doing this because I got roped into this because I want to be told where Megatron is for revenge. I actually have nothing against you. It's like, this other guy, though, I will kill him if he, he slips up. Like, I will absolutely murder him. You, you got to admire the honesty, though. You have to admire It's like, you know, I will take him out. But I got a reason. You're all right, though. <laughs> Just Meanwhile, priority. back to Shockwave. He was me. He was like, look at the whales. Look at the life of the ocean around us and its majesty and everything. I got a giant tube feeder right over here that's going to mulch him and turn him into living energy. And like, oh um, my! And then you see him turn it on, and whale, blue sperm whales, and every sea life being sucked into it, and immediately mulched to make right. uh, energy to make energy for everybody. Big here, John. Right. Still, wow. It's like, and there's Shockwave. <laughs> Meanwhile, Optimus, uh, Ultra Magnus is back. They repair, somewhat repair Ultra Magnus. 
Polita mm-hmm. one's back on Earth, is now on Earth. Um, they're trying to figure out wh- how they're going to rescue Cliff Jumper and Jazz. And to that point, I'm like, I think it's too late for those two. <laughs> when they find them, bad things will happen. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Just going to leave you know, it at that. You the Combaticons, too. I even feel bad for the Combaticons in this. They're like, uh, I think it's Onslaught and Brawl. And Brawl's lost Los is more half. And their Onslaught's like, Ah, once we get you back to Cybertron, we'll fix you. By yeah. the way, Shockwave has installed Cybertron in orbit around the moon. Hmm. That, you know what? Mm-mm. Nope. Not touching what's in football. Nope. <laughs> Again, this is a wonderful issue and only reinforces why Shockwave is worse than the devil. What did you think? What it you was interesting because I did get the idea that they were trying to cover they were trying to cover some gaps, but you you know the moment you said Shockwave was worse than the devil, I was like, I know exactly the part you were talking about. But no, um, overall it was a good issue. Uh, I, I'm going to give it to him. I did not. I was a little bit worried as far as it was going to reach a low in the story, and it has not. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely digging tra- I'm definitely digging Transformers run so far. So probably book of the week for me is probably going to be X Men. It barely squeaks out absolute power mm-hmm. just because some of the comedy in there and some of the other stuff and how it ends and whatnot. And plus, it's X Men, so a little bit biased. I did read Spider Man. Mm-hmm. It's still bad. Still got awful. But it does have a different artist. It does have a different artist. The art looks pretty good. Uh, they are advertising that Joe Cl- Kelly is going to be writing some sort of Spider-Man event called the Eight Deaths of Spider-Man, which will apparently be happening after the Amazing Spider-Man run. Can Spider-Man uh, just not have a run where misery doesn't follow him? Are you not familiar with the Parker Luck? I mean, I get that, but it's just like, just... Can we just be different for one day? For one run. Let's be different. (laughs) Yeah, we are. It's called Miles Morales. Damn. I said I set that bar of expectation. Just that I said I that was on me. I set that bar of expectation right there. That one's on me. Uh but (laughs) touche. But no. I also um, read Bailey the Spider Boy again. That character insists upon himself, but it's fine. We get to see Japanese yeah. Spider Man for a hot second. They they still do advertising. <laughs> he's still advertising. He still, he still uh, tells people. Uh, him and Bailey switch, so Bailey's tripping through the multiverse. I think they're getting ready to say, "Is like, oh, Bailey is over here in this world, not in our world." He's right. literally in the world next door. But for whatever reason, he falls into Japanese Spider-Man's world where he's piloting Leopardon. And it's like, it's the greatest thing in the world. How do I use the sword? Just say the name of the sword. And oh. then he murders them. He's like, oh my god, I killed him. Did, did he have a family? Is there anybody I got to contact? It's like, Japanese Spider-Man just goes like, oh, he's a monster. They like pop up once a week. You know, more of these things are made from an evil corporate, evil organization. That's still funny. Oh, Japanese Spider-Man. Anyway. Ah, uh, but thank you, Joe, for the comic book cool, sir. Um, but as we wrap this up, uh, you want people to know where you're doing and what you're uh if you've got something going on, or are we back on Show Guy Joe? How are we doing? Uh Tafari and I have posted something on Show Guy Joe where watching Ultraman still, because Safari is, as of uh, the 58th anniversary of Ultraman, which actually was Wednesday, Mm -hmm. uh, watched his first Ultraman. So he got exposed to that. You can go see that video and reaction there. We're either going to watch Ultraman Arc Episode 2, or we're going to watch the first episode of Ultraman Blazar, which I call uh, Caveman Ultraman, because he is Captain Unga Bunga in that series. Nice. Um, and we'll see how Tafari likes that, but he's enjoying it. 
So I'm glad we can move forward with that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm playing Monster Hunter religiously right now. Also some Zenless Zone Zero. Not a bad game. Mm -hmm. uh, just saving up. Hoping to get the pools I want. Uh, not the ones people you're going after because I don't care if you're S rank or how great your game makes your game. If I want a different character, I'm going to try for that one. Mm -hmm. Um... Other than that, no, I've just been on there. Joe got Joe for YouTube. Joe Italian last name for Twitch. Mm -hmm. Joe Italian last name for Twitter. Uh, I'm talking to some fun people on Twitter now. It's fun. It's nice. Learning uh, things I should learn. Oh, and also, um, Joe did mention during the comic book pools that uh, he will be interviewing. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what was the guy's name again, Joe, that you'll be interviewing? Orlando. If you don't know who he is, um, one very, um, very, very important in the uh, comic book world at the same time, um, also gives great deals on comics. As you know, Joe told me. Joe told me when he was at the con. So, again, want to give him a shout out to that. And, of course, can't wait to see his interview with Joe and Tafari uh, come this August. Um, we'll definitely be uh, on our Give It podcast show and also on Show Got Joe as well. Um, but I'm sorry, Joe, I didn't mean to cut you off. Anything else you want to do? Anything else you want people to know about? I'll be with the Ghostbusters almost all month. We're going to be at uh, the Brick Brick Festival tomorrow. Uh-huh. Uh, the Lego, not Lego, but like not quite wow. Lego Festival tomorrow. Over the like block, block something? Block Festival or something like that? Yeah, block fest, building block festival. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not Lego. It's uh, it's the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be there with them. The Nashville Horror Con is coming up. Mm -hmm. McFoley will be there, which is the only reason I'm going. Uh, the Gallatin Comic Con, I'll be there because that's got the Henry Winkler will be there. So I get to go meet the Fonz. Hey. Hey. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, um, other than that, I'll just be around. Cool. Well, um, as for myself, guys, before I do get to myself, shameless plugging as usual, um, I did want to bring up BlurCon again just because, again, I know that we had shown you guys that uh, it is going on right now. I want to show you guys that also on YouTube, uh, you definitely can get live. Uh, once it's live, it's actually not live now. But come tomorrow, you will see a live feed from BlurCon. So you can definitely go to BlurCon on YouTube. Or if you are in the Washington, D.C. area, definitely check out BlurCon there, um, as they will be there all weekend. Again, it is a very, very, very fun con. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy others. You'll see some of my crew, some of my folks from Blur's Eye View out there. Again, tell them hi. Have fun. Um, but if you're not able to go, definitely watch it from the YouTube site. Also, uh, BlurStation.com, guys. I cannot stress this enough. Also there at BlurCon. Definitely check them out. As we keep saying, this is the place for blurs and people of color to really bring the content here, to watch it, to have it as our own. Again, $10.99 a month. Support us through the Blur's Eye View Affinity membership. Any member there, including myself, Black Spartan. $10.99 a month, 36 months, guys. For 36 months, you do get the ability to own a piece of BlurStation yourself. You, I mean, that's that's a deal you just can't simply miss. And these folks, uh, apart from Blur Station, are there at Blur Con. So if you do want to reach them out in person, just look for their booth. I believe it's on the second or third floor of the Hilton building, but you definitely can't miss them. Um, as for myself, guys, you can usually find me, Black underscore Spartan 615 on the socials. Um, I'm usually a very friendly person. I just have one rule. Don't be weird. Um, I will talk about anything, current news, video games, wrestling, things of that nature. But again, don't be weird. Block buttons still work. And again, I'm not, and it, we're trying to be social. We're trying to spread fandom, things of that nature. But again, don't be weird. It's all I'm asking for. Um, the link that you're seeing at the bottom, I'll make that just a little bit bigger um, for you guys to see it. Copy and paste that link in your browser. We'll take you to link tree for the YouTube and Facebook groups uh, for Gibbit Podcast and how I probably got here, my other uh, podcast show that happens every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like, share, and follow literally cost nothing but would mean the world to us because we simply cannot do this without you. So like, share, follow, subscribe us not only here but also on Show A Guy Joe, also on Safari TV because our other, our other broadcast partner who is currently at BlurCon right now. So definitely, guys, like, share, and follow, and we will certainly appreciate it. 
Um, again, like I said, you usually say about cons, guys, uh, they can be fun. But as I've said before, I do have three rules for a con that should be followed at all times. Number one, respect the cosplayer at all times. Cosplaying is for everybody, regardless of your height, your weight, your color, your preference. Um, the only thing, the only rule in cosplaying, don't do blackface. That's it. You don't want your ass kicked at a con? Don't do blackface. Everything else, as long as it's not harming nobody and you're not being too lewd in front of younger children, go nuts. Also, rule number two, um, hygiene is important, guys. A lot of these places at these cons may be open and free-flowing, but if you've seen Anime Expo just last week, it was nothing but sardines in a can. Hygiene is important, guys. Please wash yourselves. Please, please put on clean clothes. Please use deodorant because, again, it's hot. We'll know very quickly if you don't have on deodorant because your body odor will enter that door before you do. So, again, hygiene, very freaking important. Also, hydration very freaking important because right now if you may notice it's still summertime it's still 90 to 95 to over 100 degrees in some areas please hydrate because excitement and hydrate excitement and exhaustion will lead to somebody passing out somewhere in the con don't believe me i've seen it at least happen multiple times even at the icon con that me uh that uh that joe and myself both went to along with our other friend shadow we've seen plenty of people pass out Hydration is very important. And number three is the same rule that I have for myself as I have for everybody else. When you go to these cons, guys, be nice, be kind. You know, if you want to add, if you want to compliment a cosplayer, please do it properly. If you ask for a picture, they have the right to say no. They're not there for your amusement. They're not there for your enjoyment. But if you're nice and you're kind and you compliment and you ask them very politely, can I take a picture or may I have a picture? I'm going to be honest. I usually say seven to eight out of 10 times, you might actually get a picture with them, but it is completely okay if they say no. Please respect them because, again, they're human beings just like you. Don't be a dick. But as we wrap this up, guys, again, we do thank you all for liking, for watching, for letting us live. Our podcast can be found wherever you get your podcast from, whether you watch or listen to. At the same time, guys, we will hopefully be back here next Friday, same Get Bit Time, same Get Bit Channel. And uh, Joe, any last words we call tonight, sir? Uh, Axel F was a good movie. You should definitely oh, watch dang. the new Nico Man series. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny, I knew we were getting something. Go I ahead, knew go we were going to wait for Tafari on those. Oh, right, right, right. We are waiting for Tafari on those. Sorry, sorry. We are but waiting. No, we are we waiting. go watch uh, both of those. Uh, Kaneko Man is a pro wrestling anime. Mm -hmm. uh, of the most extreme terms of pro wrestling, I mean. I don't mean AEW extreme. I mean, like, we're jumping 30 yeah. feet in the air to do a Kaneko muscle driver. Yeah. And this like that would make Vince McMahon blush. It's like if ECW, if ECW was animated, I mean, old school ECW. I don't mean yeah. the modernized one that that's out there now. Also, bravo for them for keeping the blood in. I thought they were not going to keep the blood in, but they did. Um, yes, go watch those two so you know what we're talking about next week, especially uh, Axel F, which may be the second best of the all four of the Beverly Hill Cops, even though nobody likes three to begin with. Ooh. I always wonder why nobody like three. But anyway, because we'll you wanted to be serious in three as opposed to jokey. No, yeah, true. But we'll definitely cover that with while once our broadcast partner does return from BlurCon. Um, and again, guys, last thing I'll say, uh, we used to say about Get Bits all about fandoms. We love them, we share them, we debate them in a very respectful and healthy way. We don't want to be gatekeepers at the same time. If somebody's tastes are different than yours, do not put them down, simply respect it and move on. The thing with fandoms is they are meant to bring people in because we love them. We talk about them. We want other people to experience the same joy and uh, same joy and love that we have. Same way with cons. Simply put, guys, share, be kind, be nice. If someone's different from you, that's cool. If Sailor Moon can beat Goku in a battle, let it go. Simply put, don't be a dick and we'll all be cool. Thank you all for watching, guys. I've been Will. He's been Joe. This has been the Give It Podcast tonight. Um, again, please hydrate. Please stay safe. I know with the hurricane situation, a lot of people are kind of without power. I know right now with the heat going on, please hydrate. Take care of yourselves. Look out for each other. And we'll see you all, guys, again next Friday. Peace. Later.